This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Miller, uh, here with Cranberry Alarm RA3D, and we're here to talk about our day one recap. Uh, my name is Corey Snyder, I'm a mentor with Red Alert, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the drive base that you see in front of you. You might be wondering, how did you guys get all of this done in one day, it looks like a lot. But we actually stole this drive base from our, uh, our RA3D bot last year, Rattlesnake. Uh, you can see more specific details about that bot on Cranberry Alarm Red Alert, but it's just an AM14U4 um, drivetrain with the 6-inch uh, Animark high grip wheels, and um, we, we thought that the size configuration we picked last year, which is 26 by 28, works well enough for this year um, for us to keep the drivetrain and use it. I'm going to pass you over to Reese now. Yeah, thanks, Corey. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more, just kind of a brief overview of our strategy um, assessment and kind of what led us to building these prototypes and uh, what led us here. Um, our number one priority this year was going to be uh, scoring the note in the speaker. Um, that will that's what led us to shoot our prototype, and then also picking up from the ground, um, and that's what led us to the ground prototype. Um, we continue, we're going to continue to iterate on these prototypes, hopefully make them better, but um, moving forward, we'll go ahead and see the uh, intake prototype. I got Jesse here to help me out uh, demonstrating this. Um, the goal of this was to basically pick up the, uh, um, no, the notes in the ground position and then bring them up into the robot and whatever, uh, and manipulate them from there. Uh, so we'll go from there. So this, uh, this intake does need a lot of work. It's still kind of thrown together last second. But um, for the most part, it does work. Um, and you can see there, it pulls, the, pulls those in with some pretty good force. And it, uh, it's pretty good touching on it. And we noticed with this, um, we, the this would be the Thrifty Bot poly belts. And we noticed that the glossy end was a little bit more grippy on the notes than the, uh, the more matte end was. Uh, we went with the thrifty bot uh, poly belts here just because uh, we wanted to get the assembly done fast. Um, so there may be an opportunity to test out some more configurations for uh, intakes, but um, for now, this is what we got. And uh, yeah, Corey, I'll pass it off to you for uh, shooter. Yeah. So next, I want to talk a little bit about the shooter prototype that we we made. Um, the the shooter that we have is a configuration with four wheels. Uh, two on each side, and those wheels are the Thrifty Bot um, four-inch kind of stealth-like wheels. I know Ryan said the exact wheel in the chat later. Maybe he can put it in there now. Um, but it's driven by two um, Neo Vortexes, thanks to Rev for giving those to us. But basically, two wheels attached by belts on either side, and we don't have any mechanism to feed the notes into the shooter yet, um, but if someone wants to help push the note in and uh, Jordan enables the robot, maybe we can demonstrate this for you. So, as you can see, um, it does fire the, the notes. This is with a, a two inch compression, um, a two inch total compression, and the wheels are not very compliant, so um, it will be around two inches when it actually goes through. 
we're still playing with the compression. Uh, this prototype, we have a lot more work to do um, in adjusting angle, the speed of the motors, and the compression to figure out what exactly uh, gives us the best shot uh, so that we can fire into that, uh, that speaker. But all of that's uh, to come tomorrow. So we got a lot of questions coming in from chat, so let's uh, grab some of those. And then whoever uh, is best appropriate to answer it can. We're going to start back off with the dry base real quick. Uh, there was a question asked in chat, why didn't you decide to go swerve uh, with the Roban 3 days drive? All right. So uh, one of the, the philosophies of Cranberry Alarm as an RI3D team is to um, make a very accessible robot. And with the AM1-4U uh, style drivetrain available to every team, um, as uh, like a part of kit of parts. It makes it so that other teams can see how capable uh, a drive base like this is. This year, we didn't really talk about this, but um, apart from like maneuvering across the field, getting around defense, it's not like there's a lot of strafing motion, which you would want to do, I think. Um, generally, the business end of your robot, um, like the intake or the firing side, is going to be um, like perfectly maneuverable with a tank drive. I'll go ahead and just uh, add on that a little bit. Um, this game is uh, pretty similar in, tor in the terms of uh, the picking up the game pieces and the scoring of last year, where you're going to pick up on the opposite side of the field and then score on the near side. Um, so in that sense, uh, there is some capability for Swerve there to excel. Um, just like looking at last year, a lot of the robots on Einstein and at the highest level were really capable. But um, to exceed, uh, to achieve a really high level of complete, the kit of parts will do great with that. Uh, next question coming in from Spider NH. Uh, wondering if uh, for the intake, could you test it with a little bit faster movement speed to see what it'd be like uh, actually picking up from the floor at a more of a match style speed? Yeah, that's something that we could definitely do, but right now the uh, intake is uh, not in the best shape. Uh, so maybe that could be something that we have for the tomorrow videos, but um, our hope is to tidy that up tonight, and then uh, by tomorrow we have some good videos of that going, really showing the touch it on it. Uh, Jaden in chat asks, uh, what's the plan for the trap door? So one of the things we were looking at was um, being able to score in the amp um, and how that compares to scoring in the trap door. And we calculated it was 36 inches, I believe. You would need to raise your robot off the ground in order for the trap door goal to look like the amp as far as scoring. 30 inches. 30 inches? Okay, so um, we, we kind of put that low on our list, even though we identified it as being really important for ranking points, um, just because as far as like match scoring goes, it's maybe not the most efficient thing, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of uniquely scored differently. Um, potentially, you would need a different mechanism or a uh, wider like, variability in your mechanism. So we, we put that lower on our list this year. Before we uh, grab a couple more questions, we're going to start our first giveaway from our friends at the Thrifty Bot, who's giving away a $25 Thrifty Bot gift card. So if you're interested in winning that, type very thrifty, one word in chat, uh, or you can actually put it as two. Very thrifty, that's your keyword. We're going to be drawing for that in a little bit. Don't forget, if you are subscribed to Fun's YouTube channel, you do get three times luck to win. Type in very thrifty right now. If you do have questions, tag at first updates now in chat. Uh, one more question for you before we uh, keep moving on presentation. Billiam Zhao uh, asking on there. Uh, as chat goes by quickly, uh, what RPM is your shooter running at right now, and have you tested different compressions on the shooter? Uh, honestly, don't know what RPM it is. Uh, we're running the the stock like zero to one speed mode on the on the Neos, but that's something that we definitely want to dial in as we go on. Um, and then the compression question, we've tested one inch compression and two inch compression. Right now we're at two inch compression um, and we definitely want to test more compression than that. Since the, uh, the notes are so pliable um, and we also notice that there can be variation in them, we want to make sure that even if a note is oblong already from other robots manipulating it, that we'll be able to shoot it out of our robot. So. All right, we're going to let the R3D team keep going with any, uh, anything else you want to present and talk about, and then we'll keep accumulating more questions from chat and get to those in a little bit. All right. Thank you so much. Do you want to talk about any programming stuff? 
Sure. So um, we have posted all of our code so far on our GitHub page. It's github.com slash cranberry alarm. There's a CA24 robot code um, repo there. So if anyone has any questions, I will be following along. Um, you can either comment on the GitHub page or in chat or something, and somebody will let me know. Um, we intentionally designed a lot of our code this year um, after code from last year in a manner we think is uh, repeatable and extensible so that you can um, control your robot in a way that's like readable for your programmers but also makes sense for the non-technical people as well. Um, so we spent a lot of time um, preparing that and uh, we hope that it's helpful for you guys. Let's go ahead and draw that giveaway uh, from our friends at the Thrifty Bot. Once again, very thrifty was the keyword. If you do win, please send Fun Tyler a uh, message on Discord or email admin at first updates now. Winner for that, Software Poet. Congratulations to you. Uh, once again, just need your uh, email address so Thrifty Bot can send that out. You know, we actually have a special guest here today in the background with a good opportunity for another giveaway. Let's bring Andy Baker on real quick from Annie Mark. Uh, we have a $25 gift card from Annie Mark as well, too. Annie, I'm going to put you right on the spot. you got to come up with a keyword for chat to put in in order to win 20 years 20 years and why is that andy this is andy mark's 20th year in existence mark and i started the business in june of 2004 so we're promoting a big 20-year celebration this whole year so we're gonna make that years. two years or uh two years two words by the way for 20 years uh so type that in chat that's your opportunity to win a 25 dollar uh andy mark gift card and andy i just gotta ask you before we get back to our 3d what do you think of the crescendo game uh and what excites you about this year's uh challenge i, I always like different size game pieces the 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 note is magnificent i think it's i hope it's going to hold up I, I i believe it's sturdy and strong and i think first did a good job of giving us a challenge that was it was new. I mean, for many of us veterans, we didn't want to see a ball, right? I would love to see a football or a bowling pin, but this is pretty cool. So I'm especially excited about this, and I'm excited about the different ways teams can score from easy ways to more challenging ways. So I think it's good for, for new teams, and I think veteran teams are going to have a good challenge. Send it back to the uh, RA3D team here. Let's talk about some next steps uh, with your robot. Uh, what are we going to get accomplished tonight, and what is kind of the next steps as uh, we go into tomorrow's recap, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern as well? So going back to the software side real quick, um, one of the things that we did, I th think, pretty well last year was we had pretty good control over our robot, I think, um, better, than, better than some people expected. So I would like to spend some time working ahead of the robot itself on some programming things, including potentially starting on autonomous kind of things or, you know, set points for speeds and things like that as far as, as that goes ahead of, you know, some of the robot systems being in place. Uh, question coming in, by the way, from Racine. Uh, which wheels are you using for the uh, shooter uh, and potentially intake, though the intake is belts, I believe? Yeah, so the, the belt system is the, the thrifty poly belt system. Um, and then for the shooter, we're currently using uh, four inch thrifty bot wheels. They're the 45 durometer um, black wheels. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, I'm sure in a future video, once we've done a bit more testing um, with the shooter, we can outline exactly exactly what wheels they are and uh, talk a little bit more. So next steps as far as the shooter goes, I think we've got a lot more testing uh, with different compressions, different speeds, fine tuning that. We need to actually figure out what angle it's gonna shoot at, if we're gonna be up against the subwoofer and shoot into the speaker. Um, all of that testing can happen tonight. And then, uh, Reese, you wanna talk a little bit about the intake? Yeah, for the uh, intake, uh, definitely the first step is going to be making one that doesn't fall apart. Um, it's going to be basically just kind of tidying up a lot of the parts, figuring out the ratio that what's going to work well. And after that, it's going to kind of be looking towards how we're going to get that game piece. We got it into the robot. Now what's our next step on getting that game piece to um, the shooter? Um, and then maybe after that, how do we worry about, you know, what do we, how do we get that game piece out of the shooter and into the amp? Um, so a lot, a lot of big questions moving forward, but... Uh, 
Oh, let's grab a couple more questions from chat, by the way. If you do have questions, please tag at First Updates now so we can see that. It highlights up on our screen. That really helps a lot. Uh, Gabe Cook uh, asking, uh, can you show how durable the notes are by stretching them and uh, potentially trying to destroy one? I say do it. We did talk about destroying one. Uh, we want to drive uh, Yeah, we did talk about destroying one. We want to drive over one and see, like, how much destruction the average robot just driving over one can do, but sure, I'll rip one. Uh oh, so oh. quite a bit. A lot. <laughs> Well, there you have it, uh, Chad. That's a precise measurement, by the way, for you uh, right there as well. Don't forget, by the way, we're still driving for the Animark gift card. 20 years, two zero space years. That will be the keyword. Type that in chat right now. Uh, Connor McBride asks in chat, uh, is CAD going to be made public or is it already? Yes, CAD is public. Um, we've, I think we have yet to post that on the, our chief death by, but hopefully we'll get that done tonight. Uh, more chat wants to see uh, a few more of the notes being shot off. Can we do that and showcase that once again? Yeah. Were you, going, were you going full blast, Jordan? Okay. And if somebody, uh, while it's shooting, does somebody mind kind of just describing once again the composition of the shooter, what motors you're using, things like that? Right, so we've got a Neo Vortex on each side um, of the shooter, which we're using the, the through bore hex feature in order to direct drive a four inch thrifty wheel, the 45 durometer black wheels. Um, and then those are belt driven underneath of what you see um, to a back wheel. So we've got two of those wheels. They're, they're spaced like um, five and a half inches apart, center to center. So there's like a good inch or so gap in between the two wheels. Um, we went with that because we wanted uh, the note to be in contact with the wheels for as long as possible before leaving the robot. And I can only imagine that whatever feeder system we use to feed the, the note into the shooter will only help uh, accelerate the note, shoot it further. But yeah, we can definitely demonstrate shooting more, more notes. And how much compression is on that right now? That is a uh, two inch compression. So the notes are 14 inches wide and we've got the wheels um, edge to edge 12 inches apart. Couple more questions come in. Uh, Sean McNulty uh, asking, hey Sean, how you doing buddy? Uh, do you think that you, uh, that you can using roller, um, let me read this verbatim. Do you think you can using roller get the ring to bend 180 degrees and go back to where it came from? And I think uh, if that's what you're referring to, uh, kind of similar to a 29, uh, 2910 style shooter from uh, like a 20, I believe they did that in 2020, um, somewhat similar to that, I believe you could. Uh, seeing how well the uh, um, note bends right here, I mean, I, I think it might be entirely possible that you could get a more uh, aggressive angle there. Um, it's just a matter of uh, us putting in the time to get that test going. All right, we are getting quite a few questions, so we might do a little bit of speed round here. Uh, from Algorithm, uh, during shooting, were the frisbees spinning? Because uh, it's hard to see on camera. Or right, the notes. I'm going to try to call them what the actual game pieces are. Right now, they're not. Um, I suppose, right now, they're not. I suppose if we uh, made, like, one side of the, the motors spin slower, we could induce some spin. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention is we plan on testing a system where there's wheels only on one side, so that would be all the spin possible, and then like a grippy surface on the other. Um, no, we haven't, 
we, there's no spin right now. We haven't tested it. Uh, Henry Francis, was the intake originally made from large rollers? And if so, why was it switched? Um, so this was the first iteration of the intake. We just kind of grabbed some rollers and started uh, um, just seeing how they felt with it. And a lot of the rollers really had some good grab. Um, a lot of the Antimark compliant wheels had some really good grab. The stealth wheels would be a really good option here. A lot of the uh, tube rollers that we see, uh, the Antimark tube rollers, the 30 bot tube rollers are a really good option here. Um, and we ultimately went with this just for ease of assembly. Uh, and it was the one that we could get done tonight. Uh, question from Charles Martin. Any damage on the OD of the note from the shooter wheels? They're checking. Nothing visible. We have to look for it. We noticed uh, when playing with some intake wheels, we did have a little bit of scuffing going on on some of the, but it, nothing too major. All right, uh, last question we're going to take from chat, uh, and then we're going to draw for the giveaway from Anywork. By the way, if you didn't see chat, we did post the CAD uh, in live chat. It's also on the Chief Delphi thread, too, and on Fun's Discord. Uh, we also do have a video uh, doing some of the 2D sketches as well, too, already up on YouTube under First Updates Now. So make sure you check on there. You can see that video and uh, a great description of what's going on for that. Uh, so a couple of last questions, or last one uh, from Eli, uh, asking, uh, how will your robot be able to score in the amplifier or trap, if at all, or what are your plans for it? Uh, so this one's a bit up in the air, and we we're kind of planning on uh, tackling this as the robot kind of begins to evolve. But Corey, do you have something you want to build on this? So right now we're thinking a couple different options. Um, if the the speed of the shooter is slowed down significantly, then maybe it's possible for a note to um, sort of fall out into the the amp, um, or possibly. If the, the shooter's low enough, it could just be shot straight up into the amp and then fall in. We're thinking that if neither of those work, those would be the least effort um, solutions. If neither of those work, maybe we can have some sort of flap um, that's actuated by like a servo or pneumatics to sort of help guide the note into the orientation required for the amp. Um, but Right now, scoring notes in the amp is like fourth on our list of features uh, behind climbing and uh, scoring in the speaker and picking up off the ground. So I think that we'll get to prototyping those sorts of things uh, once these are a little bit more fleshed out. Let's do one last round table with everybody. Anything else that you want to cover? Any other future plans we didn't talk about yet or anything like that uh, before we let everybody go and draw for that giveaway from Annie Mark? How late are we going tonight? Um, what did we go till last year? 3 a.m. the first day? 2 to 3? Yeah. That is Eastern time, by the way, everybody, so keep that in mind. We'll ask one more question real quick from uh, Tom in chat. Uh, is it going high enough to go into the speaker, or does it need to be angled higher, or are there any uh, potential thoughts on that end? It definitely needs to be angled higher. Um, it's probably not going high enough right now. Um, yeah, we're expecting that we need to up the compression in order to shoot the notes further. Um, but more, we'll tell more whenever we can test more. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and draw for that giveaway from our friends at Animark once again. 20 years, celebrating 20 years of outstanding service and robot products. Go to animark.com uh, for all your product needs. And the winner of that is going to be Tyler Hader. Congratulations. You have won that gift card. Uh, make sure you send a uh, message to Fun Tyler on Discord or admin at firstupdatesnow.com with your email address so we can get that out to you. Thanks again to Andy Mark and also ThriftyBot and all of our uh, sponsors here at RI3D, uh, Team 1741, Rev Robotics, ThriftyBot, Andy Mark, uh, and of course the Crumbia Alarm Team as well too. So we're going to let everybody get back to work. Chat, give them a big round of applause uh, for all their hard work they've been doing as well too. Give them some big thumbs up and emojis and spam chat right now. Uh, and they're still going to be running. Any questions we didn't get to, we'll try to grab and chat afterwards. So let's get them back to work. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern for our day two recap. Make sure you tune in. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.
Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.